Are you still dual booting just to run one Windows app? What if I told you there's an easier, faster way right from your Linux desktop? Today I'll show you how to run Windows 10 inside of a GNOME box with great performance, shared folders, and full screen support. Here's what you'll have by the end of this video. You'll have Windows 10 running inside of Linux. You'll have file sharing with your Linux folders. And you'll have full screen display and smooth performance. No command line, no headache, just click, run, and done. So first we need to download an ISO image of Windows 10. And I'll put this link down in the video description, but you're going to go to Microsoft.com, basically. And then we're going to select which edition we want, which is Windows 10, confirm. Then we're going to select our language, which for me is English US, click confirm. And then we're going to select the 64-bit and we're going to download it. Now I already have mine downloaded, so I'm going to cancel from here, but you would save it to a file location you can find easily. And then you will open GNOME boxes, and we're going to click the plus icon for new virtual machine, and we're going to select to insert from file, and then we're going to navigate to the ISO you just downloaded, which mine is still in my downloads folder, and then we're going to click open. And if you have a little extra memory to spare for your first time booting up, I would suggest you spare it. So I'm going to give mine four. And I'm going to give mine just a little bit more disk space as well. I'm going to give mine at least 40 gigabytes of disk space. And then I'm going to click Create. And on this screen, we're simply going to hit Next. And then we're going to click Install Now. We're going to click we don't have a product key. We're going to choose the version of Windows you want to install. I'm going to do Windows 10 Pro. Click Next. Accept the license agreement. Click Next. And we're going to click Custom Install. And make sure the virtual machine hard disk is selected. It should be your only choice. And then click Next. And now we'll click on the virtual machine again. And you should see the booting screen from there. And this will be for personal use. Click Next. And I'm going to select an offline account. Limited experience, put in my name, put in a user, it's tech time. Simple password. Security questions. And I'm going to destroy this VM as soon as this video is over, so none of this really matters. But if this is a VM you're going to be using, you can check these as you want and then click accept. And again, if you want to customize it, you can. I'm going to skip it for now. And I'm going to set that now on a store. And this is the website you're going to go to right here. And I'll put a link to their site in the video description. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to their downloads page. And you're going to scroll all the way down to guest windows binaries. And so the main one we're going to click on is this first one here, Spice Guest Tools. But we're also going to just click on this web dev one. This was for folder sharing. And at the time of the recording for Windows 10, you're going to want this first one here at the top. So now we'll go to our downloads folder. And first we'll run our Spice Guest tools. And the defaults are usually fine. We're going to tell it to install. 
And there, towards the end, you, your screen should have auto-fixed the resolution itself. If not, you may have to restart the virtual machine, but it did it automatically for me, so I'm going to click Finish. And so now I'm going to run the web dev. And for my machine, it's already open, but you would just click Yes and then go through all the defaults. So you should now have all the drivers you need to get the full use out of having Windows 10 in a GNOME box. And a good rule of thumb after running those is to restart, to go ahead and restart your machine. So we're going to do that now. So I'm going to come over here and click and restart. So now if you come back up here to properties and preferences, devices and sharing, you should see all of your USB devices and you have an option for mapping a shared folder. So I'm going to map to my downloads folder. And I'm just going to click save. And then I'm going to close this. And it looks like I may need to restart one more time before the folder shows up. So let me do a full shutdown. And let me right click on it, go to preferences, devices and folders. My downloads folder is still there. So I'll click on it to open, and that booted, that booted up pretty quickly. I'm going to log in and go back to File Explorer. And you already see in the file menu there, you'll see DAV WW root. This is my host machine, but you can click on this PC, see it there, and there's my downloads folder for my host machine. So see, that's pretty cool. Now, a little word of warning, if your Windows ISO crashes mid-install, don't panic about it. Some versions of Windows don't play very nice. I had trouble with version 1809, but this version 1703 ISO worked flawlessly. So kind of a moral of the story is, if you're a tech enthusiast like me, is to keep multiple ISOs in handy. I actually have a SAMA share folder where I store different ISOs for different versions of Linux and Windows that I'm working on and playing with. So if this video helped you escape dual boot hell or streamline your workflow, do me a favor and hit the like button down below. It helps more Linux users find this video. And if you are looking to level up your Linux game, hit the subscribe button. We're diving deeper into virtualization, automation, containers, and desktop tools every single week. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I read every single comment. Thank you for joining. It's Tech Time, and I will see you in the next video.